You're listening to the Zen of Dog Ownership podcast, where we teach you everything you need to know about dog ownership. I'm your host, Turk Akbay. My goal is to bring you the best real-life knowledge to help you be the owner your dog deserves. Hey, Turk. Hey, Han. What's happening? It's good. It's good. It's a nice sunny day outside. It's a perfect it. day to walk dogs. That's right. That's right. Beautiful day in North Carolina in February. Gotta yeah. love it. <laughs> All right. Well, today we are talking about leash aggression. And I know so many clients, potential clients, people ask about this. So I'm excited to get to share some really great information with our listener. Yes, thank you. Yeah, leash aggression is when somebody says leash aggression, I said, ooh, sounds like money. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> you're so silly. <laughs> but well, it, is it is something. An issue. Yeah, it's a huge issue and it makes walking your dog not fun. If your dog yeah. has leash aggression, like it either makes it obsolete where people don't walk their dog or they walk their dog super late at night, you know, or early, <laughs> early morning, you know, or it just, or they take their dog out with these other dogs and they're, you know, you can just see the, the misery in the owner's eyes. Like, Oh, it's so, it's so hard. It's really hard. So um, I hear like, I empathize with anyone who has that um, uh, challenge leash at the moment. But leash aggression usually means this the definition is dog becomes aggressive when they're on leash people call they're like hey my dog is really sweet no problems but when he's on a leash when they see other dogs it just goes nuts or when it's on a leash when i correct my dog with a leash it turns and tries to bite me or mm -hmm. it's trying to chase things so when dog displays an unacceptable behavior other than pulling aggressive behavior that is what we call leash aggression Right, right. And it is true that their dogs off leash can be like they could have leash aggression and not be aggressive towards other people, dogs, animals when they're off leash. Yes. Which always blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we I, we wanted to make this episode, because it's usually people will say that it's like, oh, if my dog was off leash, um, then it wouldn't be a problem. And often, you know, because of the leash laws or whatever. And so, well, let's talk about the reason of it. So yeah. there is an, um, a, a, an energetic reason, and then mm. there is a physiological, more three-dimensional. So there's an etheric reason for leash aggression, and then there's actually some physical reason for leash aggression. First and foremost, the way that I describe this is if your dog is have leash aggression, that means your dog does not trust you, the human. Don't take mm. this personal, please. You know, your dog is a dog. Your go dog can love you 100% and can even relatively respect your position and at the same time be leash aggressive. The, the dogs like us deal with stress and fear in three ways. Freeze, fight, or flight. That's it. Those are the only three ways for us and dogs to deal with what they with, with a perceived danger. Think of it from the dog's perspective. So you're, the dog is tied to a human. And dog thinks, not this complex, but the, this analogy is to help us understand our dogs better. So dog thinks, you're slower than me. You can't really smell what the other dog and what the other people are doing. So you're pretty ambivalent to what's happening here. You don't have any canine teeth. You don't, you don't have any natural capabilities of harming this danger. So, and I'm tied to you. So now, what option dog does not have? And that's the flight option. Dog understands that if you were to die, you're dead weight. So now your dog is stuck with you, and then they cannot protect themselves. So most leash aggression is actually a defensive posture rather than an offensive posture. And right. when I say this to people, it clicks. They go, oh, that makes total sense. 
Cool. And so the different reasons, I think that was a really great explanation of what, you know, what that looks like. And so some of the causes, could it be like, are they afraid? Are they anxious? Like, what all, what all does that look like for dogs? Yes. So let's say. I'm not okay. trusting the human. Yep. Yeah. So I don't trust my human. So there's a really powerful dog is coming. So think of it from your dog's perspective. Dogs are non-talking communicators. So they actually communicate through energy. So if you're walking on your sidewalk and one of your neighbor's dog is pretty obnoxious and really putting up really um, dominant power energy. And when your dog looks at your you know, neighbor who can't control their dog, dog is jumping or acting like a fool and your dog sees this, he goes, well, this person can control their dog. That's an obnoxious dog. And my people doesn't, don't know how to protect me. And therefore, I need to rrr, 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 get away from us. Get away from us. It could be a child, a children on a, a scooter or a, a bike, something that's new to your dog. Talking about if your dog is not socialized in a lot of these things. So if they don't have a good soothing mechanism, so the dog is afraid, but they don't know how to self-soothe or they can't, they can't get back to a normal state fast, well, they're going to be in a heightened situation and this will start escalating. Third one, of course, one of the things is once your dog is once um, aggressive towards other dogs, and now each time a human, when they see a dog at a distance, they go, holy crap, there's a dog. They tighten up on the leash, they grab it a little bit tighter, and they pull on their dog, and they go sit or do something to put the dog in a more submissive position. But the dog can smell the human, say, oh, you're nervous, because once you see the other dog, you got nervous. You don't have to do this consciously. Your beautiful subconscious and your brain does it. They go, let's drop a few drops of adrenaline. Let's do this. So your dog smells you, your chemistry changes. Now, your dog cannot think, oh, it's this cause that. Your dog confuses the correlation with causation. Say, oh, there's a dog, my human is nervous. Holy crap, I need to protect my owner from this. And then the dog is like, grr, bark, bark, bark. And human is like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. So now human is more nervous. And the dog is thinking, oh, this guy is making my human more nervous. And just keep barking and the thing becomes into a full-blown, angry, aggression, aggressive behavior. Mm -hmm. And what I do love that we do at Dog Owners Academy is really talk about the energy of the dog. And I just want to reinforce the, like when you just said the description of when we tighten up on the leash, like it really makes a difference. Like our dogs can feel that energetic shift in our, like through, we always say they can feel it through the leash, you know? And I know I was talking to a colleague suggesting, hey, just relax your arm, relax your arm, like just really be relaxed when you're walking your dog. And she said, no other training. And she just said, oh my gosh, that one little tip, me relax, like being conscious of my own energy shifted her dog's experience out on a walk. So I do, I do want to just reiterate that because I love that we do that at dog on, you know, like we, we really talk about the energy of both humans and the dog. So love that, love that. Um, so tell me anything else I was going to move on to, like, what can we do to even prevent um, leash aggression? But was there anything else you wanted to say before that? Well, there's one other thing that okay. people should be aware of, especially with older dogs. Sometimes as dogs age, they could have some sort of um, brain issue or they could have mm, a, sure. some sort of dementia. And as, as they age a little bit, that leash, even though they may be totally socialized, they may totally not have any issues, but then it could lead into a dog bark, 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 and displaying some sort of behavior. Of course, that's not your making, and it's not a, a choice right, your dog is right, making right. consciously. So be aware of that as well. Right. Always take into consideration your dog, like where your dog is in their life, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Awesome. So prevention, I think that's what you mentioned. Yes. Good. Don't walk your dog. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, just keep your dog inside. That was a joke. Please walk your dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. And all of this, of course, does. I mean, you can, you know, for sure call a, a dog trainer that you trust. Um, but I was thinking like along the lines of even when you maybe even when you first get your dog, whether it's a puppy or if it's an older dog, um, any dog can be socialized. And really, if you can, train them from an early age. Yes. So socialization will cut down on what your dog being more afraid of things. And less things your dog is afraid of, less things will trigger aggression. Right. Second one is you want to really pay attention to your dog's personality. This goes a long <laughs> way. Um, because some dogs are boss, what I call boss dogs. They're really sure. powerful. They know their power. And then most of the time... Well, not most of the time, but sometimes people actually get these dogs because they're powerful and they mm -hmm. want to feel safe. So if you get a dog to make you feel safe because you don't trust your neighbors or you live out in the country and things like that. So you actually project that I need you to protect me because I want you to provide safety. Well, that's a really something that you want to check with yourself. That's really important. Um, so socialization will cut down on the fear, but also you want to be aware of what you bring into table with a strong dog. If your dog is powerful and then it doesn't respect your authority, this will lead into leash aggression. Again, this right. is going to be defensive, but it's going to be really pain in the neck for you. So when you, if you have a strong dog, you want to work on your boundaries. You want to work on your your own energy, you want to work on your leadership skills, not shut up, do what I tell you, because a strong dog will not respect that type of um, leader. Absolutely. And that really just touches base on providing a safe and, you know, help the dog feel secure in their environment by being that strong leader, you know, that yeah. strong, loving, protective leader. So that, that makes yeah. sense. Well, what about dogs who who already like, so that, that's kind of preventing a dog from creating leash aggression. But what if your dog just, what if your dog has leash aggression? Yeah. So this is a what typical, when, when people call us for leash aggression, I want to mention a few things here. It's a kind of a disclaimer for us just to, I guess, keep us safe. Um, mm. We've trained thousands of dogs, hundreds of leash aggression issues. Some of these things may not work for you because when right. I look at a dog in three seconds to five seconds, I know that dog's story, their drives, and a lot of things that now comes to us naturally are actually like that comes to us naturally because we have the reps of thousands of dogs. If you have sure. a leash aggressive dog, it's ideally you probably want to call um, a professional dog trainer to assist right. you to create these boundaries and things because um, sometimes leash aggressive dogs tend to turn on their owners mm. just to correct them. So, because you want to remember what triggers leash aggression is fear. And then if I'm afraid, I'm in a full fight mode and somebody's like, calm down, relax. Well, right. honey, how often does that work? <laughs> Not very often. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is really... Tying it back to the first thing that I suggested about our own energy and trusting, you have to develop trust exercises with your dog where your dog trusts you. This right. is how we start all our leash aggression trainings. People assume we're just going to give them some tools to correct this unwanted behavior. But if we're not identifying the cause of the symptom we call leash aggression, it will manifest itself elsewhere because we didn't mm -hmm. teach your dog that you're actually making the right decisions. And then the dog should rely on your judgment. So first couple lessons when we're working with leash aggressive people, sometimes longer, but we first work on the dog, trusting humans, judgment. And then mm -hmm. they say, oh, this human is not killing me. And then right. I thought this was a wrong decision because I was exerting all this energy, but me, my human didn't. And we turned out okay. These are really critical and important things for you to work on. Right. So it's not about just correcting the behavior, but really getting to what are the causes and conditions of 
what's creating this leash aggression. Yes. Otherwise, it will manifest itself elsewhere. I mean, don't do this. And we may even cut this out of the, the, the podcast when we're editing. But if your dog is being aggressive, you punch your dog. Do not do this. But if right. you punch your dog, your dog stops doing this behavior, let's say. Mm-hmm. Well, if you didn't address this trust issue, now your dog is going to attack cars or do other stuff. So the correction comes way, way down the line on, on after we actually built this um, relationship and then trust and everything else. This is what I was saying about the positive reinforcement of the right behavior, as well as teaching your dog to trust your judgment. Those two elements has to be in place you, before you can move forward in a, a right and meaningful and permanent way. Right, right. And one other thing that that made me think of was that how much stress that causes the dog when they're in that fight or flight position. And I was just thinking health wise, just like with people like extra cortisol and extra things released in the body when we're in that stressful place. I mean, it's just not healthy for us. So what a beautiful solution, you know, to build trust between the owner and the dog and, and things like that. Yeah, hundred percent. In fact, you know, I mean, you get these calls, or you you used to get these calls all the time. People go, right. "Oh, my dog is so much more loving." Like a dog that's super loving, also obnoxious on a leash. This could happen. And then, but once that trust happens, that you see, and what mm. you are saying, this is an acidic life. Imagine right. that if your dog is a leash aggressive dog, that means that they feel threatened every time they're on a leash. So you're walking your dog, they're getting their exercise maybe, maybe they're peeing and pooping, that's really cool, but it is a fight or flight um, constant battle. Right. So right. once your dog is really start trusting you and you know how to lead your dog, and now the walk is actually a bonding experience. So now you have serotonin, your dog has serotonin, now it's not an acidic life anymore. It's actually an you know alkaline life, and it's a really right. nice calming effect. Hundred percent, yeah. Right, right. And you know, I know for me, I automatically think of when I think of leash aggression, I think of big dogs or you know powerful dogs, but also small dogs. Like you see, small Have you dogs. Had just, <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You know, that's just my brain goes to the big dogs, but it's really there's the little dogs too that are just barking and. You know, it's they're a little easier to manage, definitely in quotes, as far as weight. You can scoop up your dog, you can pull your dog, you know, you can do things with smaller dogs. But just how important it is for these little small dogs that um, have a leash aggression as well to address that. Well, you're right. So that's what happens, right? You see, I'm, you know, I don't want to isolate breeds, but you know, ongoing joke is when we see a dachshund or when we see a chihuahua, we said, hey, it should be named Napoleon, right? People think it's cute. They say, oh, my dog has a small dog syndrome. Your dogs do not know their size. So when your dog is actually doing that aggressive behavior, they're saying the same thing. You're right. If it's a, a Doberman, people panic. If it's a little chihuahua, they just pick the dog up. They're like, shh, shh, it's okay, right. which is right, right. the wrong thing to do. Aggression is an aggression is an aggression. So if you have a small dog that technically speaking, you can control it, but hear me out. Your dog is in a heightened, unhealthy, stressful state. It's true that you can manage it, but that's what causes cancer. That's what causes disease. That was, you know, yeah. that acidic lifestyle is not good for your dog. Right, right. So yeah, so please, yeah, address your little small sweet dogs too, because they... It, it happens in the same way, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Work on this balanced relationship with your dog where your dog trusts you. Expose your dog gently onto things where they perceive to be fearful and then just keep reinforcing the right behavior while correcting the unwanted behavior. Absolutely. And usually leash aggression and fear aggression, those two ways – you'll go a lot longer, a lot faster, a lot efficiently if you were to hire a professional dog trainer, whether us or whatever. But it is important for you to not just hire any dog trainer, but this dog trainer you're looking for should understand 
fear aggression specifically, and they should have experience enough to guide you and your dog. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think leash and fear aggression are definitely ones that unless you have a lot of experience already doing this yourself, that hiring someone is, is, is this easy, easy solution. Yeah. For sure. And you get yep. your, that dream dog much quicker. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Really perfect. Well, cool. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please leave a comment if this is helpful. If, if this resonates with you, please subscribe. Share this episode with your dog friends. This is Zen of Dog Ownership Podcast. We create this podcast for you. Please share it with others. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you.